All right, let's talk about the thumb thing. Should you do it or not? Because there are a lot of amazing players that do it, but also a lot of traditional teachers that say you shouldn't. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this technique. I'm gonna talk about the benefits of it and why you should be doing it. And then I'll also talk about why it's so controversial and why you might not want to add this to your playing. Okay, so as far as the technique goes, it's fairly simple to wrap your head around, but people like me with longer fingers uh, are gonna have an easier time just because there's a little bit more wiggle room. If you do have small hands and shorter fingers, most likely you can still do this. I know a lot of players say my hands are too small, I can't do it. You most likely can do it. It's just that you have to really make sure that everything's in the right position and there's a lot less margin for error. Okay, so we're gonna start off in the traditional position that you probably learned to start with, which is to place your thumb on the back of the neck of the guitar, right, just like that and then your fingers come around and come down onto the strings so that they can reach every single string with no issue. And there's a gap here, right? Our hand is not actually touching the fretboard or the neck. We're essentially using the strength of our thumb on the back of the neck to create pressure on the frets with our fingers here. So it's essentially a squeeze between our thumb and our fingers. And what you're gonna notice is this is significantly easier the higher the neck is. So if your neck is up here and you're trying to do the thumb on the back of the neck, this is gonna be very comfortable, very easy, and you can reach everything without any issue. The lower that your neck goes, the harder it's gonna be because your wrist bends more and more. This becomes especially hard if you are standing and playing with a strap and you want your guitar to not be all the way up here, you want it down here. Well, now you're creating this crazy angle, especially to be able to reach those lower strings, right? And this is one of the reasons that classical guitar players, they learn in the classical position, right? Where instead of the guitar being on, uh, I'm right-handed, so it's on my right leg, it would be on my left leg, I would have a footstool, and the guitar would be up like this, and then placing my thumb on the back of the neck and playing like this is very, very easy, very comfortable. However, to start using your thumb like Jimi Hendrix or John Mayer, uh, you need to put your guitar back into this position. And instead, we actually have an advantage when our guitar is a little bit on the lower side. And as the guitar comes up, it becomes more challenging. So to go into this new position, what we need to do is we need to sit up straight. If you're sitting, if you're standing, great. Uh, put your guitar at kind of a comfortable height, uh, but sit up straight with your back straight, shoulders kind of back, uh, making sure that you have good posture. And essentially where the fretboard is gonna sit is gonna be kind of straight. So instead of it being angled up like this, we're gonna let it sit uh, horizontal with the ground. We're gonna take our hand and we're gonna go right in with the actual palm of our hand, the meaty part of our hand, onto the back of the neck instead of our thumb. It's again, it's, it's not really in the actual pocket here. It's more kind of in this area, but depending on the size of your hand, you are gonna have to make some little adjustments. Uh, I don't have a super flexible hand, but long fingers make this a little bit easier. Uh, so it's gonna come in on the back of the fretboard like this, and then my fingers are gonna come around. And you can see, even with my fingers, I'm only able to just reach up to those uh, low strings there, and then my thumb comes around. And as my thumb comes around, I'm actually collapsing everything on the back of the neck like this, and it's gonna look like this. So you can see my wrist angle went from this Right, and now as my wrist changes, it's now more of a straight line with my forearm like this. You can see if the guitar comes up, well look at that. The angle of my wrist becomes much more uncomfortable and it's a much harder to play at that angle. So we want it to be in kind of a lower position like this. We want it to be fairly straight. However, the angle of the wrist to the side is not like this, it's like this. There's a bit of an angle to it like this, right? So as I'm coming over like this, and I'm almost using more of the side of my thumb going over here. It's not the pad as much, whereas more the side of the thumb. And that's essentially gonna be my fretting tool right there. It's kind of the hard part of the knuckle. And again, you're gonna have to make some adjustments because if you're too far up like this, you're not actually gonna be able to fret comfortably. It should be pretty low effort. And if you're too far back, you're obviously gonna be reaching around and you're gonna have a hard time actually getting that note to come through cleanly. You're not able to take advantage of the knuckle there that gives you that right angle to get over. And to kind of couple this technique up with one of the main advantages of it, uh, I like to test this out with like a basic bar chord, so an E major bar chord shape that you would typically play like this, right? So this is a G major chord. 
nice and clean as a regular bar chord in the traditional position, right? My thumb is on the back of the neck. Well, what I can do is if I leave these in this spot and I do a little mini bar, to be honest, that highest string doesn't matter that much. So if you wanna just fret the one there right now, you can, but if you wanna bar both with the pointer finger, you can do that. And then the thumb comes over and it grabs this note right here, that low G note. And you, this is kind of how you're gonna figure out if your thumb's in the right position, right? Because if it's not quite far enough, your hand's not quite in the right position, it'll buzz a little bit, won't quite get over. If you're a little bit too far, it's gonna hurt. Uh, you're gonna find that it hurts the side of your thumb. Regardless, it might not be very comfortable. It's kind of like learning a new stretch. It's gonna hurt a little bit, that's okay. A little discomfort is okay. Pain is not okay. So if you're feeling pain, either I would say skip this technique altogether, uh, or it just means you need to make some minor adjustments. For me, I can do this for hours and hours and hours and hours, and it's actually way more comfortable than uh, playing with my thumb on the back of the neck. I find that I'm straining a lot less, but you might be different. Uh, but again, it should be a very relaxed feeling. And so the thumb comes over and it's just fretting this one here, even though it's touching the next string for me. So if I were to release all that, it's still touching that next string. Yours doesn't have to, it just has to get that low E string. If this whole chord is a little bit too challenging for you right now, that's totally okay. Maybe just start with focusing on just the thumb and making sure your fingers are coming over and reaching the strings, but they can just sit uh, relaxed on the strings, just kind of muting. And then that thumb can come over and you can just practice getting that to make sound. You can try shifting your hand up and just getting used to how much pressure you need to create. Uh, instead of creating pressure, right, with your fingers and your thumb and doing a squeeze like this, instead, because of the position of your hand, you're actually pulling your thumb back into your palm a little bit. It's not a crazy amount of pressure. If your guitar is set up properly, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be squeezing too hard, but it is, again, a new muscle that you're working on. So it's something that will get stronger with time. Uh, and essentially now, instead, when you put the pressure on with your fingers as well, you're actually pushing against the palm of your hand. Instead of pushing against your thumb, it's now pushing against the palm of your hand. It feels a lot more like you're holding a baseball bat or holding onto a stick and you're holding and you're actually able to use a little bit more of your grip strength rather than using like pinch strength. If you're struggling to get this to work, like I said, it's easier if you have longer fingers. Your fingers might be too short, but basically you need to have uh, like a kid size hand for it to be too short, especially on an electric guitar. So keep playing around with it and kind of try and get yourself into the position that works for you. But really look down at your the guitar's neck and look at if you're pulling up on it like this, it's gonna be way harder. Uh, if you're too low, it's also gonna be harder because you're gonna have a harder time getting those fingers around. Uh, and just play around with where that is. You can see my elbow kind of sits in the most natural position. It's not hugging up against me like this. It's just kind of hanging down. I'm not going out like this. Uh, if your elbow's too far out trying to maybe create pressure, that's gonna cause some issues. Uh, it should be in but not tucked in tight, and everything should be loose all through here. Everything is loose. Again, there's a bit of an angle from my wrist here, so you can see there is this little angle here. We don't, it's not gonna be perfectly straight on with the thumb, uh, but it should feel fairly natural. I think the first advantage that we can talk about uh, is the bar chord thing. Because a lot of times, especially if you are gigging for long periods of time, you're playing a show, or you just want to improve your overall stamina, a technique like this is gonna help massively. Uh, if you've ever tried playing bar chords uh, through an entire song, so let's say three or four minutes of a song, and it's all bar chords. That squeeze, even on a very well set up guitar, uh, it takes a lot out of you. Cause again, you're pinching and you're gonna find that your hand and your arm and your wrist and everything, uh, they're gonna start to burn after a little while. Whereas with this technique, it's much, much easier because instead of using that pinch strength, uh, you're using the whole grip of your hand. And if you are standing with your guitar, again, at a performance or whatever, uh, it's gonna be a lot easier as well because the guitar is gonna sit lower. When we're performing, a lot of the times, we don't get to put our guitar up like this unless you want your strap really, really, really tight, which for some shredders, that's why they do it, right? So that they can have their hand in that optimal, efficient position. Uh, but for a lot of us too, we play with our guitar down here, so instead of having to make that big bend, our wrist can just come in at a nice natural position and not be straining so much. Another massively important technique is muting. Now, muting in general with your right hand and your left hand, we're not talking about this, we're not talking about this, we're not talking about that type of muting, uh, but when you play notes, 
what really good guitar players do is they will mute adjacent strings nearby so that you don't have to be quite so accurate with your pick if you don't want to be. And if you do accidentally hit some of those adjacent strings, they're not gonna ring out. Now, naturally, as guitar players get better, uh, they learn to use their fingers that they're not using to mute uh, close strings. So if I'm playing these notes right here, those ones, I'm gonna position this finger so that it naturally mutes that high E string. So if I don't want that note to come through for whatever reason, I mute it with that finger. And you might have already done something like this if you've played power chords, right? When you play a power chord like this, you actually, instead of having your fingers sit off from the other strings that you're not playing, and only playing those two notes, you wanna lay that finger down so that, in case you hit those extra strings, nothing comes through, right? That's a typical example of muting. Something that's a little bit more challenging is muting the lower strings, right? So if I'm playing, for example, uh, this power chord here, I can mute here, right? But to mute this low E string, I have to bring this finger up to mute that. So that's kind of the only way that I can do it. If you start using your thumb, then obviously that becomes a tool that you can use for muting as well. When I play a D chord, for example, uh, how am I gonna mute the E and A strings, right? So I wanna play just the four string that I'm supposed to in a D major chord. Well, how am I gonna get my pinky? That is incredibly uncomfortable to try and get that to just touch those strings and mute them. So what I do instead is I just bring my thumb over and I'm not squeezing, I'm just letting it touch, just like that. And then I don't have to pay so much attention to my hand over here. Uh, so if I'm performing or whatever, I don't have to worry about, okay, I'm making sure I'm hitting the right strings and if I accidentally hit extra strings, well, now it doesn't matter. This isn't only helpful with playing open chords, this is also a lead guitar technique. Uh, you see a lot of players do. They'll bring that thumb over uh, so that you're muting. As I move up, I'm using my thumb to mute the close by strings. And what that allows me to do is things like And that kind of gives me a good little segue because you might have noticed what I did. But I actually fretted that note there and essentially played the root note of the scale. I was just playing a B minor pentatonic there. Well now, because my thumb is here muting already, right, it's already in this position, I can fret that note when I want to. It's an excellent little tool that totally frees up an extra finger. Uh, so instead of having to go, I can go. How else am I gonna be able to play that and make it sound smooth while well, when my thumb's there? So with this technique, you're essentially trading efficiency for access. And there's a reason why guitar is taught using the traditional method of taking your thumb and putting it on the back of the neck. This is because when it comes to developing speed and accuracy, this is far superior, right? Because as you move from one string to the other, that's very easy to do when you're in this position with your thumb on the back of the neck. The actual technique and what your fingers are doing and how it feels doesn't change, right? When you're down here on the low strings, it's the exact same. Your hand is essentially in the same position. You're just kind of tilting your wrist to reach all the strings. When you bring your thumb around over top the other side of the fretboard, all of a sudden, if you were to play the same thing here, you're actually employing totally different muscles. You're training your hand and your fingers uh, to do something very different. It's going to feel quite different. And if you imagine when you're trying to get really fast at something or play something very accurately, you don't wanna be splitting your muscle memory between uh, two totally different techniques employing totally different groups of muscles. Now, another issue is the low string. So yes, your thumb can come over and play these low strings, no problem, right? But if I need to play a scale uh, or multiple notes on those lower strings, well, if my thumb is kind of in the way, it makes it very hard. I'm not gonna play a pentatonic scale like, like that, right? I'm not gonna do something like that. That would be ridiculous. So what I have to do is when I wanna play on those lower strings, my thumb comes back. And then when I want to 
spread those with my thumb, my thumb comes back up. So this is not a permanent position that my thumb can stay in when I'm playing. Yes, it's comfortable, it's easy, it makes a lot of these chords very easy, but then if I wanna play certain things, my thumb goes back and I go back into that traditional position. And this shows why this technique is not a direct replacement because you still need to do that. Splitting your time between both positions is gonna make you a little bit less efficient. It's really just building a bad habit into your playing. So you kind of have to think, do you want that trade-off of comfort and access and being able to play some of those cool rhythmic things, use it for muting and things like that? Or do you want to be able to have that optimal efficiency, be able to play scales very fast and be able to learn things a little bit faster? Because even if you do want to do this little thumb trick, you're still going to need to learn how to do the traditional method. Personally, I think this is worth it for my style of guitar playing. Whether it's something that you want to add depends on your goals and who you idolize, who you want to sound like, and the type of guitar playing that you want to have in the future. But remember, both come with their advantages and disadvantages. So what do you think? Is this a technique that you're gonna start using in your playing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're wondering what to watch next, YouTube uses its magical algorithmic powers uh, and thinks that you're gonna love this video right over here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.